Good afternoon. I'm City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge. I'm Chair of Social Services, Veterans, Cultural and Recreation. And to my right, I would like to introduce the Councilor from Ward 4, Gina Louise Guerra. And I'd like to introduce the Councilor to my left, which is Alyssa Klein, Councilor from Ward 7. We are going to open up this public hearing in regards to a resolution um, that was done like about a year ago or so on the support for vibrant sidewalks. And we are going to be opening this up to the public also, but first of all, I'm going to have Councilor Alyssa Klein read off the resolution to support vibrant sidewalks. I also just want to tell everyone that we have um, hard copies here. You're welcome to pick them up. Um, Pam, did I use the um, sign-up sheet, man? We have a sign-up sheet if you'd like to offer public comment, and it's, I believe, on the podium? No. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're carving your name into the podium. You probably just said that. Well, drop one. <coughs> if anyone would like to speak, I'll just move a pen over here as well. Um. Yeah, um, we should know that we have five counselors present right now. Um, so this has been also it's posted as a council meeting. Um, for open meeting law. And you should, you should uh, move to open the public hearing. So moved. I move to open this public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we'll just do a quick reading of this resolution. In City Council, June 6, 2013, upon the recommendation of City Councilor Maureen T. Carney, Councillor William H. Dwight, Councillor Jesse M. Adams, and Councillor Marianne L. Labarge, resolution to support vibrant sidewalks. Whereas urban planning professors Anastasia Lupetu Sedaris and Renia Ehrenfeldt, Ehrenfeldt identify five essential purposes of sidewalks in their compelling article, Vibrant Sidewalks in the United States. And whereas these essential purposes can be described as follows. Movement. Sidewalks are how pedestrians move from one place to another. Encounter. Sidewalks are the places where you meet people, people you know, people you don't know, and people you might not want to know. And sometimes this purpose of the sidewalk trumps the movement purpose. As in when a street fair temporarily closes a pathway to normal traffic. Sidewalks are where, quote, spontaneous and planned festivities break the rhythm of everyday life and give collective expression to people's joy, sorrow, or aspirations, close quote. Confrontation. Not every activity that takes place on a sidewalk is comfortable. Rallies and protests, sit-ins, or even talking loudly might be disrupted, disruptive or violate social norms. Still, these activities should be recommended, or excuse me, should be accommodated on democratic sidewalks. Survival. For some people, the sidewalk is home and the only place where they can carry out the ordinary activities of daily life. Sidewalks are also often controversially the places where some people, like panhandlers, street vendors, or day laborers, go to earn a living. Beauty. Sidewalks can be a place of lush beauty with trees, plants, street furniture, art, and other items that give the sidewalk and the community it serves its own identity. And whereas the 2011 Nelson Nygaard design charrette focused on downtown Northampton, uh, called for sidewalks markedly widened and Main Street narrowed to shorten crosswalks, increase safety, increase public space for foot traffic and in front of local businesses and provide an opportunity for more benches and whereas in 2005 a study entitled Northampton Streetscape Improvement Plan 
Main Street and Pleasant Street were, was prepared by Denig Design Associates, Inc. and called for, in addition to improving and widening sidewalks, increased seating along Main Street and Pleasant Street. Whereas people are more likely to walk in areas that host a diversity of uses, and whereas street furniture allows for a city to be more of a community, an area to gather, share and experience life together, and whereas benches provide pedestrians with an opportunity to sit and rest, wait for a bus where there isn't adequate bus shelter space, meet a friend, or read the paper, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Northampton City Council envisions sidewalks as spaces that can accommodate a variety of activities and calls for both the return of removed Main Street benches and for expanded street furniture along the entire length of Main Street. Yes. I, I would like to introduce our council president, Bill White. And Bill, you'll be taking over this hearing. Yeah. Well, uh, not taking over the hearing. I'd just like to give some context. Sure. Um, just to remind people, as in that it's been since June 2013 <coughs> that this conversation originally started. And, and, and for, for folks who may recall, what precipitated, precipitated this resolution originally was the removal of the benches and the controversy that was associated with that. But in point of fact, the origin of the intent of this resolution predates that. And in fact, it goes back to the 70s, and even in some cases earlier about activity that's occurred on the sidewalks of the city of Northampton, the, the conflicts that occur as a result of people congregating in one place. And what we wanted to do was have a discussion in a forum, and we want to expand the forum, and when the purpose of this resolution was to discuss what it is to be a civic space, what it means to be a civic space and who qualifies, because clearly there's some people who think some people don't qualify for the use of civic space. So the focus on the benches, of course, shows up at the end. It's almost moot on some level because the benches, as folks may recall, were returned. But the call for greater expansion of street furniture and promoting more civic use of civic space, as opposed to discouraging it. Now, there have been conflicts, for a variety of conflicts throughout the time throughout time in memoriam for the most part. I think I think that for every person in this room can go back as far as they can remember living in Northampton and know that there has been the conflict. The conflict actually comes from the fact that Northampton has a vibrant downtown. Point in fact, these conflicts wouldn't occur if we were a virtual ghost town like some communities in the western part of the state. I held another and some of the other sponsors held, this is a good problem to have. Um, I'm sure that I can find a number of business owners who don't necessarily agree with that. But this is in the context of a lot of pressures, the economic pressures that create situations where there are people of need who are downtown, who, don't, who cannot find adequate services, and don't have homes who need a place to congregate just as much as anyone else. Same time, the same pressures are applied to the businesses as the economy starts to drop, discretionary expenditure of dollars, uh, everything appears to be an impediment to their business, any possible abrasive point. It was a policing issue, but more importantly, it was an issue of how we define ourselves, and no one, we've never really clearly defined ourselves, who, what it means to be a citizen does it mean you pay taxes and you qualify? Does it mean you vote in Northampton? Does it mean you were born in Northampton and you would therefore qualify or you have some status that puts you higher than others that you get first dibs? Or does it mean every sentient being who deigns to come and walk and participate on any activity in the city of Northampton qualify? That's where I sit, but that's, that's why we're having a forum to have the discussion. Because I don't make the rules, but we, well, actually I do on some level, but I, I participate <laughs> with others to make the rules. I don't, I don't get to say by fiat. So the hope was is to, when we first introduced this, there was some considerable pushback, principally because of the language. There were a lot of people thought the language actually promoted and allowed um, disruptive uses. Um, you heard. Well, some of the things I can't even say, actually, but the, the, there was the 
the, the threat and concern that if we essentially endorse this resolution, that we would thereby be telling people they could do pretty much anything they wanted downtown and thereby create um, a, a level of disruption that would be in, intolerable by most citizens. So we wanted to be clear on the language. This is why we suspended and tabled this. We want it, we, because point of fact, actually, a lot of the things that were expressed that they, people thought were going to happen if we passed this resolution, the people camping out downtown and using it as a public toilet and, and any number of other things are actually already precluded by law. <laughs> They're not allowed uses. But that didn't matter, and that, and unfortunately, the conversation got away from us. And we were hoping that we could have a more, during the time when it, there's not so much pressure, the fall works perfectly, that we could have a more tempered conversation. A conversation that included people that have normally been excluded from these discussions. And that's usually the people and the social services and the police and other agencies that have not been necessarily incorporated. It's mostly been driven by the pressures felt by the business community. We needed to expand that conversation um, while, while not excluding the business community's expressions of concerns. So our hope here is that the public will help us figure out a better way to craft the language so that it is, it imparts the same message without pushing the same buttons as it were. And more importantly, actually have a conversation about what it means to be a civic and civil place. So that's the frame. It's, and, and I'm really grateful that uh, the SSVCR sounds like a sounds like a ship with a television system in it that used to exist when video sources work. Um, but this committee actually is the perfect venue to have this discussion. So I now, and, and I'm, I'm uh, the Councilor Adams is here. I'm here and Councilor Labarge is here. Councilor Carney was not able to be here, but uh, she will be here at the next meeting. But we're also available for questions and, and the like. So thank you. I'd like to add two framing points to what Bill, as Councilor Dwight, has shared. Um, one of the things that isn't apparent from the read of the text is that we are really uh, using this as an opportunity to also um, look at downtown Florence. Um, we're talking about the downtowns of Northampton. We're including downtown Florence, so we'd be very happy to hear any comments that people have on um, that section of our city as well. Um, and then another thing is, um, as, uh, as we noticed in, in the reading of this, there is a focus on kind of the benches. And we really wanted to use this as an opportunity for people to offer public comment that goes beyond that and to really think about you know, what we want our downtowns to, to look like. Some of the questions that we put on the posters I think are really relevant here. Um, what do you want downtown Northampton and downtown Florence to offer to your family? Um, what do you like and what don't you like about our downtown areas? How can we make our downtown areas more inviting, comfortable, and safe for all of Northampton's residents? So please keep those kinds of questions in mind in your public comment um, and, and think more expansively perhaps than what is actually contained in this resolution. I would like to open up this public hearing and if you would like to step up to the podium and state who you are and your address, please. Good afternoon. I'm Natalia Munoz and I live at 63 Rick Drive in Florence. Um, I support wholeheartedly putting benches in downtown Florence, um, and even putting more benches in downtown Northampton. The more people who can enjoy the city, the better. I think that the issues that the businesses raise, they're legitimate issues, obviously, and those are issues. If people are being too loud, too rowdy, too this or too that, that's something the police can handle. 
but that should not have us, you know, corner us into thinking, oh, we shouldn't put any benches because we put benches. That means that rowdy people are going to sit there, or homely, homeless people, or I don't know what kind of people. It's just the city belongs to everybody, everybody, no matter where they're from. <coughs> so I encourage you <laughs> to find the money <laughs> to put more benches, and I don't really know how many, I can't say four, five, ten, but definitely the more benches in the downtown area such as Florence and Northampton, the better to enrich city life. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pat Shaughnessy and I serve as the director for the Northampton Council on Aging and Senior Center and I also serve the city as the ADA coordinator and I would just like to speak about the benches um, which is a topic that comes up at our um, Commission on Disability uh, meetings fairly often and um, I promote the concept that um, Florence needs benches and Northampton has benches but could use more and I promote it from the standpoint of uh, looking at the resolution where it says to sit and rest. Well, many seniors and disabled um, individuals or persons with disabilities uh, need a place to stop, take a breath, move on to the next event um, of getting to a store, getting to the church, getting to wherever their destination is. Um, this addresses um, both Main Street and Pleasant Street, but if you look at where our center is, what's on the outside. We have Michael's house, McDonald house, uh, Walter's house. We have a number of seniors and disabled people walking, trying to get into the city and needing a place to stop and rest. And the same is true in Florence. We have four senior apartments. We have Tobin Manor. But let me just go beyond seniors and disabled um, because also people, children, um, young adults, others who have asthma or uh, congestive heart failure, they also need a place to stop and rest before they move on to get to their destination. So I strongly encourage um, whatever way uh, additional benches can be placed um, to serve in that purpose, that yes, they can be places where people can have socialization, can uh, share a, a lunch together, read a book, read the newspaper, but I think it's vitally important to think about people who need it out of necessity. Thank you. Hi there, Devin Bruce from 46 Columbus Avenue. Um, I need to confess that I didn't read the, the material for the meeting, but I responded based on the fact that it was about pedestrians and sidewalks. So what I'd like to do is introduce a broader way of thinking about it because I'm bothered by the infrastructure of our sidewalks, how poorly they're maintained, and to even pick up on Patty's point of view, every winter I see wheelchairs in the street. And you know, I know that's a much bigger problem, but, that's, but, but when you fix the sidewalks and you make the sidewalks a good inviting place, you get more people walking, more people is actually good for all of this interaction. It's the solution to problematic interactions is to have a lot of people around. So I see it as sort of a, don't just fix the benches, fix the <coughs> entire network of our sidewalks so that neighborhoods use them to walk into town. Um, I won't sidetrack this on a conversation about crosswalks per se, but I think there's there needs to be a public conversation about the crosswalks in town. I'm, I'm quite bothered by the one on South Street. Um, and I know there's a mix of opinions about that. I have written to Stimson and Design to be concerned about the design that carries a crosswalk, carries a sidewalk to that crosswalk. Um, and I'd just like to pick up the sort of broader context. We had a meeting in town, I think it was all of last year by Walk Boston, uh, and it was greatly attended. There were 100 people there. So um, I'd love to see that kind of conversation <coughs> had about just the, the pedestrian sidewalk, people out walking sort of environment. So I'm 
you know, you, you can tell my leanings. I'm on the bicycle subcommittee and I care a lot about pedestrians, but I think, I think really we need to face up to, I know our streets need fixing, but every time we work on the street, I think we should be working on a sidewalk. And as evidence, the state gave us the new sidewalks on the bridge on South Street, and they just made a great deal of difference for people coming into town from that neighborhood. Thank you. Councilor? Hi, City Councilor Jesse Adams. Um, I wanted to point out that the, the, the Economic Community Development Housing and Land Use Committee earlier this year <coughs> Uh, proposed two amendments that passed in that committee and are included in this resolution. One is in the survival section and one is in the, the final paragraph. Um, under the survival section where it states that for some people the sidewalk is home and the only place where they can carry out their ordinary activities of daily life. You'll notice that eating, sleeping, which is in parentheses, that the rest of us more commonly do indoors it, uh, has been proposed that that be stricken. And that was in response to the concerns of the business community that um, that some some of the business community felt that we were actually promoting that these activities actually happen on public benches and um, and we felt that in order to to correct that that the um, I think um, misconception that that's what we were promoting we proposed that recommendation and similarly um, in the final paragraph there's another suggested there's another proposed um, amendment which strikes the uh, talking about the the uses of sidewalks we propose striking the enjoyable and disruptive um, activities language and, and propose instead um, simply that the variety of activities um, that that language be placed instead because that again was in response to the concerns of the business community that we were promoting um, disruptive activities Thank you. Hi, I'm Todd Ford. I live at 78 Firm Street in Florence. Um, I think the, the resolution uh, says it best when it says vibrant sidewalks. And I think vibrancy can only happen in the streetscape and in the sidewalk when there are people. And I think the importance of having lots of people as diverse as possible is something that uh, the city should definitely pursue in both downtown Northampton and in downtown Florence. And I think one of the best ways to achieve that is to promote more housing in our downtown. I think the city needs to take a real strong look at our zoning code and how it relates to housing in the downtown, both in Florence and in uh, downtown Northampton. Uh, for example, in Florence, uh, the new building going at the corner, uh, which is a great addition and does all the right things by coming out to the sidewalk and having a zero lot line in the front, in terms of a land use point of view, it's offering more medical office, which in my opinion is the last thing downtown Florence needs. Downtown Florence needs people in order to achieve the vibrancy that is sought after uh, in this uh, petition. So I would definitely support broadening the view uh, of vibrancy to go beyond uh, the benches, which I think is uh, a microscopic uh, way of looking at it, uh, and to look at the streetscape as a whole, not just the street infrastructure, but the design of the street, the traffic timing that takes place, the type of crosswalks, street trees, which are vitally important and are ignored largely in Northampton and in Florence, the zoning, what is encouraged under the zoning, what type of housing is encouraged, if any, uh, and also, uh, just general design parameters around signage uh, and exterior uh, aesthetics uh, that go on uh, with the buildings that are that are coming in currently uh, and also being upgraded. And I also think it's critical for the city to look at maintenance uh, and how all of uh, the downtowns are planned to be maintained uh, at a level that uh, is worthy of uh, downtown Northampton and Fort. So I do think broadening this topic. Uh, as some of the other uh, discussions I've done in the studies is, is important uh, and I would definitely recommend maybe having some discussions in downtown Florence as well as here in downtown Northampton to make sure you get some folks uh, from Florence to talk about their downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? <coughs> Hi, 
name is Ruth McGrath. I live on Longview Drive in Florence. Um, I'd like to make a point about, again, the benches in the front center. Uh, and not only the benches, I'm disabled. I can't walk well. I walk usually with a cane or a walker. Uh, to go from anywhere in the center of town to one end or the other where the benches are available is impossible for me. I can't do that. Therefore, I avoid shopping in Florence Center because if I can't get a spot right in front of Miss Flo's or the post office, it's no good for me because I have to walk. There's no place for me to stop, get my breath, get my legs back together and keep going. Um, it's gotten to the point where I had to sit on the wall outside Florence Savings Bank because it's the only seat available. And if I'm alone, that wall's too low, I can't get up again. I need help. So those benches, I think, not only would serve the use of just my comfort, but I think it would bring business more into downtown Florence because people can come, walk as far as they can, shop some, sit, relax, shop some more. I know it would bring me and several of my neighbors back. I have to go outside down to Camp Center to East Campton. Um, any place I can go where there's parking, like a large lot or some place where I can sit around a business. Thank you, Ruth. Jasper. Hello. <clears throat> My name is Jasper Lopiansky from South Street. And so I would like to take this opportunity to condemn something that happened last year, which was the mayor acting on behalf of the bid, an organization to which he does not answer, he answers to the public. Uh, I'd like to condemn the mayor for removing some of the benches to stick it to homeless people, of all the people to stick it to. And I think that anyone who is in public life in Northampton be it the mayor, a member of the council, a member of the Board of Public Works, or a member of the bid, if they feel moved to stick it to homeless people for asking for money, they should resign immediately. Um, I would love to know which of the people on those benches asking for money chose to be homeless, prefers that to having an actual seat in an actual apartment, and then I'd like to go on to say um, that homeless people weren't the only ones enjoying the benches. Some of them were put back, some of them weren't. Every time I walk on the bike path <coughs> between Pleasant Street and Con Street, I notice some of the benches that aren't there that I used to like to sit on. Um, yes, there are occasionally some interactions with some of those people that I'm not too fond of recalling, and yet, I still go there. I would still like to sit. Um, I am able to walk to the next one. But Northampton doesn't just have to be about bare necessities. It can and it should be about fun and recreation and eating really good. I actually sat on a bench on my way here. I didn't make it for 5 o'clock because I wanted a bigger ice cream from Ben and Bill's. Um, it was really good. <coughs> had I not had a bench, because I sat on one of the ones that was removed and then put back. Had I not had that bench, I would have had to sit in the shade and wear a sweater, and it wouldn't have been as much fun. And there's no reason why a town like this can't represent that. Thank you very much, very much Jasper. I, uh, just a point of clarification. Uh, the mayor did not remove the benches at the bidding of the bid. I can't believe I said that, but the, uh, in fact, actually, the bid was somewhat reluctant. They were enlisted by the mayor in the absence of the DPW to remove the benches, but they, in fact, were actually reluctant to do so. So the, just to be clear about that, and I'm far be it for me to speak to the mayor because he's perfectly capable of doing that for himself, but the impetus for removal of the benches seemed like an elegant solution at the time for a number of concerns that were expressed by downtown business owners. Um, I but think he would... represents the people, not the business Well, it, just a second. And I would think he would own at this point that that was not the best solution, and in fact, which is why he turned it over. So, but I just want to be clear that the bid was not the driving force in the removal of the benches. So that, I mean, that would... <laughs> 
They take enough grief for enough things. That one they don't have to own. That, I just wanted to make that clear. Fair point, Southern Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. And business owners. <laughs> Business owners are people too, is that what you said? Yes, yes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jonathan Wynn of 25 Summer Street. I've lived in Northampton since 2006. I'm a professor of sociology at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And I study city life, um, including two seven, city, seven year studies on public spaces, culture, tourism, and urban redevelopment projects. My work has clocked hundreds of hours of research on sidewalks and public spaces, and I've interviewed dozens of people, mostly on sidewalks. Uh, mayors of cities big and small, executives of major business, uh, music labels, business owners big and small, convention and visitors, bureau executives, chambers of commerce people, uh, musicians, uh, Grammy award winning musicians, and uh, buskers on sidewalks. If having some skin in the economic growth of downtown sways you, I have that too. My wife is a downtown business owner um, at a business that's overrepresented in the audience. <laughs> My interest was piqued by Benchgate, and I appreciate the opportunity to comment on our vibrant downtown. If anyone would like to learn more about how to make public spaces more successful, there's no more widely lauded and cited case than Manhattan's Bryant Park, which is behind the New York Public Library, for those who don't know. 1970s, the place was dangerous. It was a notorious drug haven. Hundreds of hours of research conducted by sociologist William H. White resulted in identifying four key components of successful places. Lots of groups greater proportions of women, variability from day to day and month to month, and lots of places to sit. <coughs> White concluded, so-called undesirables are not the problem. It's the measures taken to combat them that's the problem. The best way to handle the problem of undesirables is to make, make places attractive to everyone else. So what were the suggestions for successful urban places? One, create art objects and social activities that induce strangers to speak to one another. Two increase surveillance from vendors, neighborhood employees, and passers-by. Three, make sure that there's enough space for desirables, quote unquote, and undesirables, quote unquote, alike. These key principles were enacted in New York and it sparked a major turnaround in Bryant Park. How does this all tie into our issues in Northampton? Well, seating, for one, if you notice, was a primary importance to white. More seating, he said, more people. If there's more people, there's more visibility. If there's more visibility, there's more safety. And if there's more safety, there'll be more people. And then more, uh, if there are more people, we'll have more successful spaces. So in the spirit of William H. White, I don't just say keep the benches, I say more benches. Benches are shared assets. There are amenities like a public park, like a street light. These are components of our collective social contract for a public sphere, but also more activities, more places for congregation, promoting social life uh, more, not less. Overall, I support the resolution. I have two quibbles. First, a confrontation is an encounter. Um, so I don't care for that language. Second, I'm concerned with the notion of beauty as a precept for public spaces. Such a condition makes it easy to scapegoat the homeless, the needy, the destitute. It's immoral to cast certain people as aesthetic problems to wish away their human beings in need of care and help, not blemishes on a pretty tapestry designed by and for the few. Justification for removing the benches cited in the Gazette on May 21st, 1913. 2013, woo! <laughs> Thanks for laughing, Jess. The, the benches were used, uh, being used too much. Um, I would just like to say that coming face to face with people who use public spaces, quote unquote, too much might be unsettling for some, but those moments of discomfort should be reminders that our society has deinstitutionalized the mental health system. It requires poverty even in times of economic growth. I'm more than happy to explain that as a sociologist for those of you who don't get <laughs> capitalism. Uh, has a drug and homelessness criminalization problem and still has a long way to go to protect the less fortunate. This is all to say that when dissimilar people meet in public, it is a feature of our civic society, not a flaw. It is a benefit rather than a misfortune to be regulated away. Any energies to help the poor, the mentally ill, the destitute should be directed towards bolstering our social services, not barricading the public sphere. A healthy public sphere cannot and should not be a false mirror. Otherwise, we might as well just go straight to the mall. Thank you. Thank you. Well, while you're up there, can there be a question? I don't know how this works, but can I ask a question before you? Are can you somebody from the uh, group uh, uh, ask a question? Yeah? Yes. Uh, sure. yes. You just said <laughs> combating the undesirables. And, uh, the way to combat the undesirables was to create more desirable spaces. No, to attract it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just want to know, what does that mean by undesirables? And, and 
Right. Well, it's in quotes uh, by the uh, by, by the sociologist. But in, in the time that he was talking, he was writing was people who were uh, using drugs, selling drugs, and people who are homeless or destitute. Yeah. Um, but although that can be applicable to any number of groups, I would I would Performance venture. Performance artists. One more time. Performance artists. Mimes. Performance artists, mimes. Uh, <laughs> um, it's a subjective thing. Each one has your, you know. It's community. De it's community determined. I think yeah. in some. Before he sits down, may I ask a question? <laughs> is that because you Professor? pose a complex model, which is not Main Street in some ways, because isn't Bryant Park actually a park? Yeah. And Main Street is a pathway mm -hmm. that doesn't have as much public mm -hmm. domain mm -hmm. as Bryant Park does. Sure. Bryant Park has a whole lot of kiosks mm -hmm. and for sale opportunities. Mm -hmm. We're all, which were all designed as part of the precepts by the sociologist William H. White, as to, as to, as to bring in more visibility, more vendors, and things like that. That is all part of the, the design. Right, and all I'm saying is I think it's a great model, mm -hmm. but Main Street is four lanes of cars. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I Right, and part of the Nelson Nygaard, I think, is to, is to actually expand the width of the um, that sidewalks. I that. Yeah. But there's um, been a, the, there has been a recommendation to digest the road down expanding the sidewalks and expanding public space and this is also in the context by the way of this of the rebuild for uh, Pulaski Park uh -huh. to make one cohesive public right. uh, continuum of public space that runs up and down the street mm -hmm. but to create less pinch points on the sidewalks and create more expansive uh, then, then it is a, a feasible model mm -hmm. but because mm -hmm. as it is now really mm -hmm. the, the cars have a path people have a path there's not a lot of opportunity for exchange mm -hmm. in between I feel like I'm in class. Any other questions? <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I think it's in fact the issue. Is yeah. how you turn right. a, a challenging thoroughfare into a public gathering place, which is what <laughs> I think we want for businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Stilettos has been empty for a year. There's lots of innovation that can happen. Right. Um, places like San Francisco have these problems. They take, actually take a parking space and they make it into a public park. I'm, I'm you know, I'm there's all sorts of innovation that, that could actually be done. For, not, not just Let's turn Spilato into a public park. I'm sure Eric would love that. <laughs> what do you get for wearing a blazer? Would anybody else like to come to the podium and speak? Hi. I'm Sarah Hamgen. I live on Elizabeth Street. And um, I came. I don't even remember how I heard about this, but obviously it was posted and I saw the word sidewalk, so I came. Um, I've lived in Northampton since 2001 and live in a house with four adults, one child, no cars. And I've been a pedestrian in the city since I got here. Um, I've never owned a car in my life. And so I'm very into sidewalks um, and buses, and I don't think we have enough of either here. I know there's been revisions to the bus system, but it's um, still greatly lacking in my opinion and not promoted in a way that's really user friendly. Um, like, you know, Transperformance, I mentioned PPTA in one of their quiz questions, and it was really exciting, but you know, it's still be 2,000 people at Transperformance, and yet we don't have buses going through Look Park, picking people up. There's a huge mob scene of cars, and it's very dark. You can't walk home on the bike path, or, it's, you know, I mean, it's, so to get in and out of events like that is difficult without proper sidewalks, proper busing. Um, so I'm really supportive of what I'm hearing here. A lot, you know, of people are interested in getting people the access they need, all people. Um, and it will, I think, improve business downtown, uh, both Florence and uh, Northampton, <coughs> if, and anywhere else. Like, if we can also get to East Hampton on, you know, why aren't we going <laughs> around and around and, and include, getting all these cities, you know, working together, hopefully, I mean, certainly Northampton and Florence should be an easy, accessible place for all of us. So I appreciate what I've been hearing here from everyone and I hope that I can still, I can be part of it to help as well. Thanks. Thank you very much. Would anybody else like to come up to the podium? Is that 
Michael, did you have your hand up? Did you want to speak? No. Okay. Just listening. Okay. Uh, be just, just some brief comments, and actually, I'm very encouraged also to hear from this, uh, hear from everyone on this point. I think, actually, to Todd's point, uh, and I think this refers back to what I was saying before, was that the the vibrancy, and this is what was alluded to by uh, Professor Wynn, <laughs> that <laughs> the vibrancy actually creates the conflict or the confrontation. The the, the fact, and as I said, this was actually a good problem to have because if we didn't have these points of conflict, it would mean that we're a barren place where we have no place to encounter each other, good or ill. And the council sponsors particularly, but the council in general have, this has been a point of concern and it's been large philosophical debate that never, that hasn't really, unfortunately when it gets down to codifying it, it becomes rather complicated. And I just want to point out a resolution is just that. It's, it expresses resolve. It is not a law. It is not an order. It doesn't create things. And no one gets arrested if they don't agree to what do we say or not. But I think, I think I'm going to take a chance and speak for the council in general was based on the debates that we've had. That for the most part, everyone recognizes and acknowledges how critical it is, not just to businesses, but to <laughs> our, the sense of what we think of ourselves as a community our best aspirations requires that people be able to congregate and conduct human business on the streets. And anything that we can do, and that's why we want to craft this language to express that as, as clearly and as succinctly, but also as emphatically as possible. And any, any in your co uh, comments are very helpful today. And I would ask you, there is another meeting that will be occurring in Florence that you can encourage anyone else who you consider to be like-minded or not, people who actually disagree with this, because we need pushback on this too. But we want to expand the conversation and get the ideas of the citizens as to what it is that they actually envision their city to be. And, and whatever we can do to facilitate that, would be grateful for any recommendations. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor Joy. Um, I want to thank, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm Maggie Striegel, and I, I missed uh, the first half hour, but um, I thought what you said was very eloquent. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome to come up. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I, That's I'm okay. here only because I think I agree with you. We have an incredible opportunity in this community, and I agree with what Professor Wynn said because we are uniquely gifted in our ability to dialogue. I'm Mandy Striegel, by the way. I live at 124 South Street, and I've been here, I think, uh, since 2004. Um, but, but I don't know what's intended with all these, the, the dialogue about what we would like. I would love a vibrant downtown. I'd love one like Bryan Park. Um, I think we have all the, the pieces to knit, but I don't know how to knit it into a more intentional, opportunity than what we have right now. I guess I'm hoping that beyond dialogue that we will, there's some sort of committee that's formulated to organize ideas, to take initiatives. I well, today, actually, this, all the things that we're talking about here echo uh, the, the Vision 2020 plan, which was established eight years ago. Right, right. The, also, um, the Nelson Nygaard design plan that was discussed for downtown, right. how we envision that. There are plans in the offing. So all the people in suits with salaries have been discussing this <laughs> and, we, and, and, and all to good purpose and intent. But the fact is, is we wanted to get the people behind the doors and the people who don't have doors to participate in the conversation to help us. Is we, because the council, such as it is, we just vote on a final set of rules that come before mm -hmm. us. That's, and how those rules are crafted requires public participation and opinion in that. Is there a working system. committee? Not as of yet, and this is, this is the opening and introduction of the conversation. A working committee would be great, and we can figure out how to go from there and what that would look like and what it would be and what its purpose and goal would be, absolutely. Because my, my observation, if I, if I can steal the podium for a nanosecond longer, just my observation as a community member is that there are a lot of great ideas, but somehow they don't coalesce. Like, 
I was a part of the design charrettes on that intersection, which is so appalling there. Um, but it takes a lot of money. So, so revenues require a strategy. Business development requires strategy. Innovation requires strategy. And it's, it, I, I don't know the mechanism for knitting. I guess that's what I'm curious well, about. Well, part of what you're speaking to is a holistic review and study and how to, mm -hmm. to do these things. And actually, as opposed to make them happen to facilitate and allow them to happen. Right. Because these things happen organically. I mean, Northampton became the city it is through some aspect of zoning. For, for the most part, it was actually luck thievery, artistry, all sorts of things that actually conspired to make what we have now. We want to facilitate what we can for creative solutions. Uh, that's why the charrettes on the park, on the intersection, mm -hmm. those seem somewhat piecemeal, but they are part of a larger, of a larger rubric scheme. Of, of a holistic view. Uh, Councilor Ryan O'Donnell's back here. He's the head of the Transportation Parking Commission. Oh. <laughs> he, he's, I mean, he act, he's, he's charged with looking at the, the uh, transportation and parking and and pedestrian systems here in the city holistically as opposed to a street by street basis. Um, and we as counselors, uh, particularly Councilor Adams and myself, tend to be less parochial. We look at the city more holistically mm -hmm. as opposed to each ward issue. Um, and we look to bigger brains than ours and creative minds that then require, we hire consultants sometimes to actually well, help. It sounds with. pretty good so far. The only, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I would say is that the economics of today sometimes yeah. preclude luck. Absolutely. And oh, that, yes. And, and that it might be worth something a little more strategic well, uh, at this point. And I think you're right. I and feel I like we're on the cusp of either becoming it or not. Well, that's the thing is, is of course, what drives these things and what's the impetus for funding, uh, grants and the like, is public and community support. Okay. And that's, that's critical. Well, I'm here to express it. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Yes. Hello, my name is uh, Adam Dunnitz. Uh, I live at 121 William Street. Um, I'm a member of the Northampton business community. And I, uh, I apologize, I don't have a prepared thing to say. Um, and this is an emotional issue for me as well as I'm sure it is for most of us in this room. Um, I also want to say I don't speak in any way as a representative for the Northampton business community, just for myself. Um, in that uh, I agree with um, almost everything that's being said today uh, as far as a shared desire for a vibrant community, for community, for accessibility, for safe streets, safe sidewalks. Um, I just want to uh, also hope that we can acknowledge in a shared way that this is a very complex issue um, as uh, an expansion of places to sit um, I guess uh, while I've had an extremely um, uh, positive and I feel like blessed experience um, owning, owning businesses in downtown Northampton um, uh, there's also been aspects of that life that have you know uh, made me made me a little cynical I guess and um, I guess a fear that I have of putting lining downtown with benches. Um, I guess I want to express concern that that there would be no mitigating factors. Like I guess just when someone comes in and and and, and sits down at a bench and claims that bench is their bench all day. Um, I don't think that that, uh, I, I think it's good that that person has a seat and a place to be for the day, and if they didn't have that bench, you know, I think it's definitely worth asking, well, where would they be if that bench wasn't available to them, and what are we as a city and a community doing for them? Um, but I do want to call attention that, in my opinion, that adding more benches um, is not necessarily going to increase, increase uh, more accessibility for uh, for all of the different reasons that we're speaking about here today. I, I, I think that um, I, I don't want to draw the connection that it'll be create more trouble for business, but I but I do think that um, it, it feels like it, it sometimes feels 
I don't know if this is the right word, and maybe I shouldn't say it, but um, it feels a little lawless um, what we allow, or what we as a city and a community um, allow to happen in downtown Northampton. And I'm sorry, you know, I, I, it's complicated, and I think that maybe more than anything, I just want to draw attention to that, that like, whereas I agree with everything that everyone has said and want that also for myself and my family and my community and my main street, um, I do see it as a very complicated issue, and uh, I don't have much more beyond that other than to say that. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Would anybody else like to come forth to speak? Um, Mike Nagy. Um, 20 Hampton Avenue. Um, and just along with this discussion, um, what I would like to suggest is that in Northampton, uh, there are many restaurants and retailers and offices that have a step up to get into the facility. So, what I would like to see is for uh, there to be two or three foot ramps available that people can use to get up those one step ups. Uh, that the police department will retain control over those ramps um, at the police station. Um, and you can take these ramps out much as you would take out a library book uh, for some amount of time to be decided. And then also with a deposit, you know, some value of the ramp or whatever. And with a signature, um, you know, do we require an ID from people? so that you will retain ownership of that ramp for the, the period during which it is loaned out to you. Um, so there's still much to be worked out, um, but this will benefit people, I think, with mobility difficulties. Uh, this is a group that is certain to increase as our population ages and assistive technology improves. Um, anyway, that is basically the proposal. And uh, I will donate the first few ramps. Um, Thank you, Michael. Anybody else would like to come forth to speak? Okay, I just want to thank everybody for being here this afternoon. I think it was great that we were to come together and listen to what everybody had to say, your concerns, how you feel. The communication has been excellent and we're coming together and I think we can make this happen. And I think it's extremely valuable that everybody's ears are opened because we wanna make Northampton what it is and it is vibrant. And we also wanna make the town of Florence be very vibrant also and again thank you all for being here and I just want to state that the next public hearing that is scheduled for October 14th and that is on a Tuesday on the vibrant sidewalks from 7 o'clock p.m. to 8 30 p.m. and that will be held at the Florence Civic Center so I'm hoping 
that you can let your friends know, and even the professor at the University of Mass, let everybody know. We'd like to really pack the room up at the Florence Civic Center and let everybody come up to say how they feel, how they want our city and the town of Florence to look like. And we all respect you for being here. And believe me, we're listening because I think a lot of what we had heard tonight was very, very valuable, so thank you. And uh, point of information, this is a continuation of the public hearing. The public hearing remains open and that uh, the committee still accepts information if you want to send them to them as part of the public record and that they, it, will re it will reopen on uh, the 14th. Thank you.